Hello, my menopausal wonders. <laughs> I'm so glad you haven't grown irritated with me, given the fact I teach you all these things that are somewhat unpleasant. <laughs> but hey, it's better to learn about, learn about them here than it is to learn about them through experience, isn't it? This is an education on everything that has anything at all to do with menopause. And while the very topic of menopause is an irritating one for most women, here you learn everything you need to know to make it illuminating rather than irritating. We are in the midst of a huge unit on breast cancer. This is video number 371, the 16th video in the unit. And we're tackling the part of the unit pertaining to the risk factors for breast cancer. In video 369, I presented the long list of risk factors before addressing each one in a separate video dedicated just to that one risk factor. Last week, video number 370 was on your personal history of cancer as a risk factor for breast cancer. And today we will, we will be discussing exposure to intense radiation as a risk factor for breast cancer. In other words, the irritation of irradiation. Chapter 30 is the breast cancer chapter in my book. But in my book, all I do is list intense exposure to radiation as a risk factor. I don't explain it further like I will here today. So, when you see that exposure to intense radiation is listed as a risk factor for breast cancer, what comes to mind for you? Do you think of a catastrophic event like a nuclear disaster or a nuclear power plant explosion? Or do you think about the multiple radiologic procedures you've had over the course of your life, such as mammograms, x-rays to assess arthritis or broken bones, DEXA bone density scans, CT scans, and such things like that. Or do you think about radiation therapy as a treatment for cancers? Which of these irradiations constitute enough irritation to increase your risk of breast cancer? You see, just seeing this item listed as a risk factor does not specify which of those qualify as a risk factor for breast cancer. I wouldn't want you to minimize the significance of the radiation exposures that are risk for breast cancers, and I wouldn't want you to exaggerate the significance of the radiation exposures that are not risks for breast cancers. As you learn from this education, I am very specific about everything. One of the reasons you were so confused about menopause and all it entails before getting this education is because most people are not specific. I guess you could say that specificity is important for any kind of irritation. So let's address exposure to intense radiation as a risk factor for breast cancer one specification at a time. The four specifications of importance for intense radiation as a risk factor for breast cancer include all the following. First, the kind of radiation. Second, the anatomical location of the radiation. Third, the timing of the radiation. And fourth, the degree of increased risk from radiation. So let's just delve into this. The first thing to specify is the kind of radiation that increases your risk of breast cancer. Earlier I posed three possibilities. Nuclear disaster, routine x-rays, mammograms, DEXA bone density scans, and CT scans, and three, radiation therapy for cancer. So let's talk about those. The first is a nuclear disaster. Now, a nuclear disaster or explosion can increase your risk for just about anything. But nuclear disasters are fairly rare events. So while 
A nuclear disaster can certainly increase your risk for breast cancer or any other kind of cancer. It is not the kind of radiation that is most commonly associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. It's certainly an irritation-worthy kind of irradiation. It's just not that common. At the other extreme is the second kind of radiation exposure, the very common routine radiation. And while it's an irritation to have to get some of the tests that use irradiation, most, mostly it's an emotional irritation. So the routine mammograms, x-rays, DEXA bone density scans, and CT scans that you have throughout your lifetime do not increase your risk for breast cancer to any significant degree. These are all considered to be very low dose, dosage forms of irradiation. They are not irradiations resulting in cancer-worthy irritation. And that leaves us with our third kind of radiation exposure, radiation therapy for a previous cancer. And this kind of radiation exposure is commonly associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. And that's because radiation therapy for cancer is very intense. Cancer radiation qualifies for cancer-worthy irritation. So the topic of our discussion today is radiation therapy for a previous cancer. So in some ways, today's video is related to last week's video. But it's also a standalone because there are some specific things about having had intense radiation for cancer in the past that render it a risk factor for breast cancer in the future. So that does it for our first item pertaining to kind of radiation. The second thing to specify is location of the radiation, in terms of anatomic location where you received the radiation therapy. In other words, what part of your body received the intense radiation? Now this is important because unlike chemotherapy, which affects all the cells in your body, radiation therapy is localized to just the part of your body bearing cancer cells. When it comes to the kind of intense radiation that increases your risk for breast cancer, it is specific for radiation therapy near your chest wall for cancer treatment. So chest wall irradiation causes the irritation. Most of the time, the kind of cancer for which you might receive such intense chest wall irradiation is a type of lymphoma called Hodgkin's lymphoma. It involves radiation of the thymus gland in your lower neck, but there are others like thyroid cancers that are also in your neck. So an important distinction to make is that the intense radiation is directly to your chest wall. It is unlikely that intense radiation to another part of your body will increase your risk for breast cancer specifically. It may increase your risk for some other kind of cancer in body parts near the irradiated area, but it is unlikely to increase your risk of breast cancer if the irradiation was not anywhere close to your breasts. The third important thing to specify is timing. And there are two aspects of timing to consider. One is when you received the radiation therapy. The other is how long afterward you are likely to develop breast cancer. So what about the timing of when you received the radiation therapy? The most common scenario in which intense radiation therapy increases your risk for breast cancer is if you receive the intense radiation before the age of 30. So the risk is increased most when the radiation therapy is done at a young age. So youthful irradiation constitutes irritation. 
And what about the timing of how long after radiation therapy cancer develops? Well, the increase in risk for breast cancer typically occurs about eight years after the radiation. Now, if you reflect on what I taught you in the unit on cancer in general, this makes perfect sense. You learned that it takes about seven to 10 years for a cancer to be detectable. In that unit, I showed you this. It depicts the time it takes for a single cell to lose control, replicate excessively, and become diagnosable as a cancer. So you can see here that one cell becomes two, two becomes four, etc., etc., etc. And this happens over and over again until you have a cancer that can be diagnosed as a cancer. So the timeline here is all the way down to about seven years minimum. So cancers do not pop up overnight as women so commonly claim. It takes eight years from the time a cell is irradiated until it can create a cancer that is diagnosable. And remember, these would be cancers that are diagnosed very early simply because both the patient and the doctors of any woman who has received radiation therapy to her chest will be on the lookout for breast cancer. Now, why do you suppose intense radiation therapy to your chest wall for cancer can result in breast cancer eight years later? Well, think about what radiation therapy entails. It essentially consists of burning tissue. Well, burning tissue with irradiation is a form of intense irritation. Irradiation causes irritation. In video number 367 on hereditary versus non-hereditary breast cancer, you learn that non-hereditary cancer is due to gene damage during the course of your lifetime. Well, few things are more damaging to genes than the irritating effect of irradiation. So irradiation constitutes irritation that functions as the first step in disorganization of cells. And that disorganization of cells becomes more and more and more disorganized. You've seen this prop many, many times. It depicts the progressive degrees of disorganization for cells that ultimately become cancer. And irradiation of your breast cells results in irritation and dis organization. And when it comes to the likelihood of developing breast cancer following chest irradiation at a young age, it's the rule rather than the exception. So this constitutes a very high risk of breast cancer. And that brings us to the fourth and final important thing to specify, which is how much does intense radiation to your chest wall increase your risk of breast cancer? Well, by age 50, the cumulative risk from chest wall irradiation is equal to that of having a BRCA1 gene mutation. Now, why do you suppose intense radiation increases your risk of breast cancer to such an extreme degree? Why does irradiation cause as much irritation as a mutation? Well, if you reflect back to video 367 on hereditary versus non-hereditary breast cancer, I used these scars to illustrate chromosomes and genes. These are two normal chromosomes, and each color represents a different gene. And you learn that the reason a genetic mutation carries such a high risk of developing breast cancer is because you come into the world with one genetic mutation in one of your genes on one of your chromosomes. You start out that way. In the case of having had a previous cancer for which you receive radiation therapy, unless that previous cancer was hereditary, both chromosomes start out normal with no 
genetic mutations. But you also learned that most breast cancers are not hereditary. They occur as a result of damaging genes over the course of your lifetime. So over the years, you damage one gene, and then another, and then another, and so on, and so on. And the more genes you damage, the higher your risk of damaging the genes that prevent breast cancer. Well, when you have radiation therapy for cancer, it damages genes. That's irritation. Radiating is irritating to your genes. So, the process of receiving radiation therapy damages genes, putting you in a situation in which the likelihood of damaging genes that prevent breast cancer is very, very, very high. So this explains why developing breast cancer after intense radiation to your chest wall is the rule rather than the exception. The younger you were when you had the radiation therapy, the higher your risk. It's a whopping 55.5% higher than it is for women who have not had radiation therapy to their chest wall. So that's the relative risk, 55.5%. So the four specifications that contribute to intense radiation as a risk factor for breast cancer are as follows. It pertains to radiation therapy for cancer. It pertains to radiation therapy to your chest wall. It pertains to receiving the radiation therapy at a young age before age 30. And it increases your risk of breast cancer by 55.5%. So let's expand the line item for intense radiation on our chart of risk factors for breast cancer to specify chest wall irradiation at a young age. And let's add the statistic to our risk chart to indicate the relative risk imposed by intense radiation therapy to your chest wall. Do you see how learning the specifics helps to keep you focused on precisely what matters? I hope you're relieved to discover that routine low-dose mammograms, x-rays, DEXA bone density scans, and CT scans do not increase your risk of breast cancer. I hope this education allays your fears as much as it alerts you to the real concerns. So that is about it for today, ladies. And if you want the chart, you can find it via the link in the description box or at menopausetaylor.me. And while you're there, you can benefit greatly by scheduling a consultation at menopausetaylor.me and you can benefit greatly by subscribing to my newsletter. I sure hope you've already subscribed to this channel. And of course, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Stories. Come back in a week to learn about the impact of your family history on your risk for breast cancer. Boy, is that an area of complete misinformation. <laughs> I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.